My name is Adrian McEwen. You might remember me from such Oshcamp talks as What is the Internet of Things back in 2012? Uh, or the CompuServe of Things um, in uh, Wuthering Bites in 2013. So it's, it's good to be back. Um, <clears throat> so I, I connect strange things to the internet generally, uh, sometimes for fun, sometimes kind of products for myself, sometimes things for other people. Um, and for the majority of this year, um, I've been working on a project that kind of combines all of those things um, into, into kind of one kind of research project. Um, so we've been doing some research for the Royal College of Art, and they've been looking at uh, future make spaces in redistributed manufacturing, which is a bit of a mouthful, uh, but basically they're kind of interested in working out what the kind of fab labs, maker spaces, hack spaces, all the kind of maker movement can be doing. Hex, I'm being heckled by a chair. That's a new one. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> um, and basically, yeah, they're kind of looking at all the sort of the maker movement stuff and things like Oshcamp um, and the open source hardware movement, kind of what that can do to then enable um, and kind of encourage different ways of doing manufacturing that are kind of you know, more distributed, 3D printing, all those kind of you know, new technology things that you keep hearing about. And so as part of that, um, we've been looking at the local, so local supply chains as an area that they were interested in exploring. And so we've been doing some research to kind of tease at some of this issue. And, and this is all just the blurb off the um, indie manufacturing website, so you don't necessarily need to read all of it. The key things, I think, the, you know, the two kind of imaginary quotes, I don't know if anybody's actually said that apart from me in trying to explain what the project is to people, uh, but the kind of things that we used, um, me and Andy Goodwin, who is the uh, researcher I was working with on this project, uh, were kind of looking at to, to sort of try and explore things. You know, it's this, this idea that the UK doesn't make anything anymore. You have to go to China if you're kind of making anything. Um, and all you can make in the UK is kind of handmade, artisanal, really high value, um, kind of expensive stuff because even if you could make it with a machine, someone's not used a machine, they've used their hands because that's better and they can charge you more. Um, and that's cool, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I'm kind of interested in whether there's something in, in between, like, is it just that you can either make stuff and make kind of ones and tens of things at your makerspace, um, and then the other option is you go and raise shed loads of VC money um, and go to China? It's like, are they the only options? Like, is there a sort of middle way um, where you can you know, maybe use, you know, maybe there are um, kind of companies around that you can work with who are, are local, and the fact that they're nearby means that you can do things in the kind of you know, hundreds of things, or maybe a few thousands of things, uh, and that then lets you try stuff out and work out whether there's a market for it or not before you've decided to sink loads of cash into making 20,000 of something, um, or that kind of, um, uh, what was I gonna say with that? Completely lost my train of thought with that. But yeah, that kind of looking in the middle thing, working out, you know, other different processes, that's what I was on about, yes. Um, where if you, you know, injection molding plastic, that's just expensive to do, like initially. There's a big upfront cost of like five grand, 10 grand, something like that to do all your tooling. And then after that, everything's really cheap. But if you're only making like 500 of something or 1,000 of something, that's suddenly, you know, five or 10 quid on your bill of materials just for the bit of metal that you're gonna use to squirt plastic into. So like, can we look at different processes, different materials that more lo might be available more locally, there might be expertise in more locally that, that will maybe let you do different, different ways of, of uh, approaching stuff so you can do sort of medium scale manufacturing. So why, why am I doing this? You know, why is it an important thing to do? Um, one of the things that I did, or I do, is, is help run a makerspace in Liverpool um, that I, I co-founded called Does Liverpool. Uh, and from there, we, we're kind of trying to let people do, do things differently, and you know, it's providing that space to enable people to kind of run at stuff. 
um, that the, the kind of standard way of accelerators and incubators and all that kind of thing don't allow, um, let people just bootstrap things more easily. Um, and you can you know you can kind of make one of, all, of pretty much anything in the, with the tools that we have, um, and you can maybe make tens of things. And we do have people who've kind of got into the maybe hundreds of things, but by then that's lots of work, and you tend to want to get somebody else to do it when you get to that sort of point because it's you know it's it's a bit tedious. You don't necessarily have the tools lined up to do that kind of production run. Um, <clears throat> and and I really like this quote from Eliel Saarinen about thinking about sort of everything in its context bigger and stuff. And so, you know, one of the things we do when thinking, you think about a person within a makerspace, but then a makerspace within a community and a community within a region and so on and so forth. And it's just thinking about what's that stuff that's kind of around the makerspace that will let us do more interesting things and, and you know, tap into that kind of, you know, the community, the manufacturers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, it's a very, very nice tweet from, uh, from one of the guys who, who works out of Does, um, and is doing really interesting kind of open source um, uh, water, like remote operated uh, uh, autonomous vehicles and sensing platforms. Um, <clears throat> but the problem with that is that I don't scale. <laughs> um, there's only me, and it's nice to, you know, there's a lot of knowledge in the makerspace um, when you want to make something that you kind of go, oh, right, well, we want to get, get a load of cardboard cut. And you can do a little bit on the laser cutter, but you're not going to do hundreds of boxes. Um, and so that's like, well, OK, yeah, you need to talk to Ross and Patrick, because they got um, cardboard boxes die cut on the, down on the dock road. Um, and that kind of knowledge is in the makerspace and in the community. But you need to know who's worked on which projects, so you can go and talk to them about it. Uh, and if they leave, you know, if they move away, then that kind of knowledge is lost. So some of it's trying to work out how we kind of improve the bus ratio of, like, you know, what happens if I fall under a bus. Um, all of that knowledge gets sort of disappears. Uh, it would be nice to try and capture some of that. It won't be as good as going and chatting to the people who've done it. So like the, they're, they're still always going to be the better kind of um, source of information because they'll give you, you know, you can have a conversation with them about what they did, how they found this kind of manufacturing stuff. But if nothing else, yeah, it means that we're not going to completely lose it uh, and we start to build up that kind of knowledge base. So what did we do? Well, we interviewed a load of makers, um, quite a few of whom are doing open hardware. Um, and so that was us kind of working out, finding out what kind of things people were, were running up against, the problems they were hitting, approaches they were taking to kind of solving these problems. Um, and we kind of published them on the, uh, on the website. Uh, we did a load of mapping, so we were kind of like, okay, are there loads of companies around that we don't know about that we need to just go and find? So there was lots of visiting industrial states and uh, wandering around industrial states, kind of, um, yeah, taking photos of, of little companies, trying to work out what companies did, going and doing research about them, um, and then we, we were pushing all that data into OpenStreetMap um, because we thought that would be a good repository. You know, it's like, oh, we're doing a load of stuff that's to do with mapping. Where do you put stuff to do with mapping? All oh, right, yeah, there's, a, there's an open source kind of movement for that. It's kind of OpenStreetMap. So we can go and start tagging things in there. And some, you know, some of the suppliers and factories and so on and so forth are already in there. And so we were just adding some new tags to start to kind of record things like, OK, this is a place that does uh, CNC machining of metal. Um, this is an injection molding factory. This is a leather satchel manufacturer. Um, all those sorts of things, trying to kind of capture and have that as a place to, to kind of store some of this knowledge. Um, and we also uh, yeah, got our hands dirty. So we kind of figured that going, we can go and do all this stuff, talk to people, and um, uh, and go around and map and try and find these manufacturers and talk to them. But often what we found in the past is that you talk to people, like there's an um, electronics manufacturer in Liverpool, and you kind of run into them at meetups meet and stuff, and they say, like, oh, yeah, we, we, yeah, we do PCB like assembly and, and making products and stuff, and we're just in speak down the road. If you're doing like hardware, you should come and chat to us, because like, maybe we can make this stuff for you. And that's cool, and you kind of think, oh, great, there's like some guys just down the road, and that'd be good. I can support this local company. 
Um, and then you go and chat to them, and it turns out that whilst they can do this sort of stuff, you need to hit a certain sort of level of manufacturing before it's worth their while to talk to you. I mean, the, the, it's not that the, you know, bad guys or, or disinterested in this stuff. It's just, you know, they've got a production line set up already that's making things to connect old bits of industrial machinery with serial ports to the internet. Uh, and tearing all that down to start making your stuff takes them some time, so it's only worth them doing it if you're going to get like a thousand units made or something. So if you turn up going like, I want a hundred boards, they're like, oh, actually, you know how we said that, uh, <laughs> that we really like and we can do this sort of thing? Yeah, we could, but it's, yeah, it's, it's too expensive. It's not really worth anybody's while to do that. So the best way we thought to solve some of that, which also had a nice side effect of letting me do a load of product development for my company, uh, <laughs> was that we should make an actual product, like make a few hundred of something, because um, that would help flush out some of these issues and show, you know, see what was, the, what was really the kind of the problems that we'd hit and what things that we wouldn't realize until we were trying to do it and things like that. Um, and the, the RCA were really keen on this being action research, apparently, is what that's called, um, where you don't just write bits of paper and stuff, you get out and do stuff. So, what did we learn? Like, so, this started basically at the start of the year. It should have started a little bit earlier than that, um, but yeah, it was kind of January when we really got things going on it. It was a six month project, um, although I think it was actually the end of July that it's officially finished, um, and um, yeah, what did we learn? Mapping is really hard. <laughs> um, persuading people to put stuff into OpenStreetMap is quite tricky. Loads of people know one or two places that you're chatting to them about, and they're like, oh yeah, there's those guys, there's like this little firm on the dot road, and they make this amazing stuff, and like nobody knows that they're there, and they're really cool, and we use them for this. Um, and so people are happy to share their knowledge, but when it then becomes like, yeah, okay, you just need an OpenStreetMap account and you just need to sign in here. And it is really easy once you've done it once, but there's like, you know, there's just a number of little steps and getting over those little steps to actually do stuff is difficult to get people to do. Um, there are lots of industrial states <laughs> um, uh, and, and it takes a long time to go around all of them. We were trying to work out at one point whether we should have some kind of um, testosterone rating for each supplier that we found, as like how manly you had to feel before you felt safe going over the door. Like, because, you know, this, this is an actual photo from one of the industrial estates that, um, that Andy visited. Um, and it's just, it's not the most kind of welcoming of, of places. Um, and there's loads of just that sort of knowledge within there that you kind of, it's hard to, to work out whether it's like, am I allowed in here? Is it, are these people open to being approached by the public? Uh, do you need to have been working in the industry for 20 years before they'll even have a conversation with you about it? Um, and you know, this sort of stuff, yeah, it's tricky. Um, and working out where the people are is, is, is difficult to do. I mean, we were looking at um, sick codes, which seems to be how anybody doing any kind of research into industry stuff um, and how the government tracks all these sorts of things. And it's sort of an open secret that sick codes are a, a complete waste of time and useless pretty much um, because you know you don't get any sit you don't have to report any sit codes until you've got a limited company so that's a whole swathe of companies that don't ever report who they're what they do uh, and then no one really explains to you what the sit codes are so when I um, set up MCQ Unlimited you know uh, back in 2005 um, yeah, I was like, oh, I need to put some sick codes in. Right, I'll search through this big list of loads of random industries and pick two that kind of look like they might be the sort of thing I do, and I don't know what happens if I get them wrong, and I don't know if anyone's going to check. And, you know, and, and then they're what I picked in 2005, and I've, each year I go and do my company house annual return, and I go, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. I haven't changed anything. Yep, yep, yeah, that's all good. Here, have the 15 quid. Right, that's that job done with. Uh, <laughs> when I think I'm supposed to kind of go, oh, Actually, in 2005, I was just doing software, and now I do hardware as well, and bits of, you know, is there a sick code for 3D printing? I, who knows? I haven't gone and looked at them since then, so that, you know, even for my company, that data is horribly out of date. Um, but there isn't anything better. <laughs> so, like, policy and stuff like that keeps getting built around information that's coming from sick codes that, like, the people doing it know that this is 
useless, but it's kind of like, this is as good as we've got, so we're going to just use this. Um, and, and I think we worked out that going around the industrial states and just looking at stuff is, it, like, it, there's some value in that, but you don't really learn very much about what the company's like. Uh, and, and there's a lot, you know, a lot more effort to go into to kind of properly find out what the company's like. And some people are doing this sort of thing. Um, there's a really good website called MakeWorks uh, that Fee Scott has been running for a couple of years now, and she's been you know, doing this sort of thing but around all of Scotland, um, but also doing little videos with the manufacturers. And like, it's an amazing website, loads of really good, useful information in it, but it's also like, more than a full-time job for her. Uh, and we knew that, that was going to be the case going into this. And we are like, well, there isn't enough funding, and neither of us want a full-time job going around looking at, you know, it's fun to go around industrial estates a bit, and like, it would be nice to have the time to do all the interviews with really cool manufacturers, but I also want to, you know, I have a makerspace to help run, and a company to actually earn a living from, <laughs> um, and I want to make product. So we weren't going to do that. Um, and so ours is kind of, you know, it was always going to be a bit more superficial, and it was working out that actually, yeah, there's, there's value in working out there's a company that's on such and such an industrial state that does X, but that t doesn't tell you very much. And so what would have been better with hindsight would have been to spend more time trying to kind of find ways to get it easy, make it easier to get the information out of the community, because like, I used so-and-so is just leagues ahead of there is a company there that does that. Because it's like, okay, you've got some experience. You know whether they're any good or not. If you've told me that I should go and talk to them, then they're worth going and talking to. Um, and, you know, actually the software side of mapping is a bit tricky. I've already talked about getting data into OpenStreetMap, but getting data out of OpenStreetMap isn't quite there yet. Um, so this is a, a snapshot of the, um, the map that's on the Indie Manufacturing website now. Um, and most of the stuff is around Liverpool because that's where we're based and it's easier to go and look at industrial states that are on your doorstep. Um, and we found loads of companies. Um, but uh, getting that data out of OpenStreetMap, there are some really nice tools like Overpass Turbo and UMAP, um, which can, you can kind of combine to get live data out of OpenStreetMap, but they're just not, they don't have the performance yet. So I spent a reasonable amount of time playing around with that before ending up caching the data, so I kind of query over past Turbo every half hour or so to get. So this is kind of nearly live data from OpenStreetMap. Um, and and just, you know, there'd be a few things that would make it, it would be really nice for you know, the OpenStreetMap community, I guess, in general, to find the time to make these tools just that little bit better. They're almost there. So you can almost do some really nice stuff where you're just going to go, oh, yeah, hook this slippy, tap, the slippy map up to overpass turbo and then it'll just pull in live data filtering it on these tags and then you know display different um, sets of data for you know these are the different ways we had different tags as to whether stuff was a factory or a machine shop which we were kind of thinking that's places that do laser cutting do CNC machining kind of places that will do a service where they'll take a bit of material and turn it into something for you and factories are kind of things that produce finished goods um, and then, yeah, makerspaces and fab labs, and then the trade counters one isn't visible on the map at the moment because that is a massive data set because that includes all the kind of little, um, yeah, trade counters, so screw fix and, you know, places like that, um, and places where you can go and buy nuts and bolts and things, and there are just loads of those in OpenStreetMap already. Uh, and so turning that data layer on requires a huge amount of data, which I couldn't cache easily. And so it pulls it from overpass turbo, but it just, yeah, it's all a bit slow. So there are some issues around that, but it's, it's getting, you know, hopefully it's getting, it is getting better, and there's scope to make it even better still. So, you know, does the UK not make anything anymore? That's not true at all. The UK makes loads of stuff. There's loads of little tiny companies doing all sorts of crazy, interesting, amazing things on your doorstep, wherever you happen to be, I'm sure, <laughs> um, that just nobody knows about and nobody talks about. And I don't know quite why nobody talked, because they're doing really interesting shit. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, finding things like, oh, yeah, there's a company that makes loads of leather satchels in, um, in Heighton, and they're, yeah, like, they're just around, and they're really cool. Um, and making things takes a long time. <laughs> so the product that we're making um, is this internet-connected bell, 
Um, and um, yeah, like six months was always going to be pushing it to do a, like full on hardware product. <laughs> um, uh, and surprise, surprise, uh, it's not finished yet. But it's almost there. Um, and actually, there's, there's some truth in the UK doesn't make anything anymore. Like the kind of low cost components and sort of parts of things, like we don't make that much. You know, we're finding this sort of stuff. Remember, like the ESP8266 module that's inside the bell, um, like that comes from China, because <laughs> there isn't anywhere in the UK that will make you a, a thing that's got a processor and Wi-Fi for like two dollars in units of one. Um, and I remember I was CTO of Goodnight Lamp a couple of years ago, and we were looking at Wi-Fi at that point, um, and we were struggling to find anywhere, even in China, and stuff that would get us Wi-Fi modules for less than twelve quid. And now it's like. China's gone, oh, Internet of Things, you want like a processor, some memory, and Wi-Fi, and like not very much money. Yeah, so we can sort that, yeah, have these things. Um, so that sort of stuff you end up getting from China. Uh, bells, it turns out, the only places in the UK that make, make really top quality bells that are really expensive, because they're for like you know, musical instruments and churches and things. Uh, and it's, it turns out that India is kind of where bells are made. Uh, like on Alibaba, almost all the suppliers for bells are in India. Um, and Alibaba is kind of an interesting one, you know, going through that sort of thing. It hooks you in really easily because you can do um, a search kind of, you know, and just start looking for stuff. But then there's actually a bunch of back and forth with the suppliers and emails and things. Um, and it's not as easy as, it, as buying stuff on eBay is. But, you know, still, it's amazing to be able to just go. I've been with a web browser and some emails, and I've gone and taken, um, you know, the, I've swung massive supply chains into action um, just from my computer. It's like, that's amazing. But at the same time, once you start to customize stuff and get more into it, there's lots of value in being able to go and talk to somebody and find out things um, from them. You know, and a map is just the start. Like you do mapping, and it's like actually that just gives you the first place to go. I mean, the best way to go and find out how to make something in the UK is that. Pick the, pick the supplier that you think is nearest to what you might want to do and go and visit them. And they'll probably kind of go, oh, yeah, we don't really do that. But um, what you need, we haven't got the right kind of bed for that. And um, you need to go and talk to these guys. And they'll point you at somebody else. And then you go and visit them. And they'll go, yeah, yeah, we, we kind of do that sort of stuff. But yeah, we're not right. But these guys are. And you just kind of iterate. <laughs> uh, and you can do it quite quickly. And then after the new, we bounce around a few different CNC wood places to then end up with one that can probably do what I need to do to CNC the wood for the frame. Um, and you find loads of stuff out there. But not, it's not about the kit particularly. It's about knowing the exact bits of it. And you get that kind of information from people uh, just going and talking to them. Um, and the, you know, all the support organizations, they similarly don't have a clue. Everyone kind of thinks, oh, the council will know who all these people are and stuff, or the local enterprise partnership. And yeah, we know we work quite closely with them, um, with the makerspace. And, and actually, they don't know. You know. They're using SIP codes, and they know that they're a bit rubbish. And they don't actually have a list of all of the suppliers in the UK. You know, the manufacturing bit of the local enterprise partnership doesn't know how many manufacturing companies there are in Merseyside. Um, and you know, and they, they want to help, but they can't. It's like really, you know, they, don't, they don't really know how to. Um, and they, they don't know how to talk to people like us. And you know, similarly, we don't really know how to talk to them and work out what we want. Um, so that's difficult. And I thought open source hardware camera would love a nice picture of Steve Barmer. Uh, but you know, it's people, 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 um, rather than developers, developers, developers. Uh, it's all about the people. You know, it's about relationships that you're building with your suppliers and finding out stuff. And you just need to find the right people. And then you'll get loads more information. And they'll push you loads further forwards with stuff. Um, so what else are we doing with this? Um, one, are we finishing the product? <laughs> Although the project is over, um, I still want to ship product. And that's partly what got me into, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the past few years, is slowly kind of working my way towards this sort of thing. Um, so in the next few months, <laughs> he says, optimistic, yeah, there'll, be, there'll be bells on sale. Go to that website if you want to sign up to find out when that happens. Um, I've got some cards and things as well about both the project and the bell, um, if anybody wants one to take away. Um, and improving the map, like we've got this 
data set now, um, and there's still loads more could be added to it, and it's still it's quite localized to around Liverpool. Um, it would be great to make it much bigger and much further across. It would be nice to find the time or to work with people to, to kind of improve the OpenStreetMap tools. There's loads of demand for things like this. There are loads of organizations doing kind of bits of, of mapping of stuff, um, and they want to be able to, you know, having it where it's like, well, you just push the data into OpenStreetMap, and then there are these ways that you can easily pull it out and display it to people would be really, really good and would really help kind of OpenStreetMap or the organizations that are doing stuff help people find things, just generally that would make the world a load better. So it'd be really nice to work a bit more on some of those, and I'm gonna be trying, yeah, chipping away at bits of that myself. Um, and, and maybe finding a better home for the map. Um, at the moment, it's on the indie, um, indie manufacturing website, uh, but that's gonna kind of become a bit of a, um, I suppose, a kind of an archive of what we did with the, uh, with the project, and the, so there'll be some more interviews we still need to publish. There are a few more blog posts that I want to write about some of the stuff that we found out um, to kind of improve that, but then after that, that's gonna be fairly static. Um, and so actually, particularly for the kind of map of the supply chain across the north, because um, you know, where everything gets made in the UK really, uh, then, then maybe the UK Maker Belt Association website is the good place for that, to kind of cover the, that strand across from Liverpool over to Hull. Um, I'm not sure how far up it goes. I think when we asked Aaron, it seemed to encompass large amounts of the north <laughs> and get bigger each time almost. But you know, maybe that's a good place for it to live so that we can all start to share um, kind of you know, what we're finding um, and, and make it easier for all of us to go through this kind of like, oh yeah, I've had this crazy idea and people seem to like it and now I need to get some stuff made. Um, and I'm trying to work out whether some of that will be locally, some of it won't be. but at least if I know where the local stuff is, I can go and make an informed decision rather than just kind of, oh yeah, I read an article on Hackaday which points everybody at Shenzhen or something. Um, and just in general, you know, everyone should be doing more making um, and then more manufacturing of things that they're making. Like, I want more people like me that I can go and ask about stuff. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, and feel free to ping me and talk to me and ask questions about things. Um, and then, yeah, more sharing about what we find how we're going to do stuff, and, uh, and then you know, profit, presumably. Um, I need the underpant gnomes sliding at the end, don't I? Thank you very much.